Hey, this is Connor, and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd channel for another interview. Joining me this time is John York, one of the UK's most successful television writers and producers. He has run the long-running BBC soap opera EastEnders across three separate stints, and worked on shows such as Life on Mars, Shameless, and Waterloo Road. John is also the author of a popular screenwriting book, Into the Woods, which discusses his ideas regarding structure. If you enjoy this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. So, uh, so welcome and thank you for taking the time to do this. It's okay. It's fun. Yeah. And how have you been finding life in the pandemic? <laughs> well, it's not too bad actually. It's it, it's um, you know, I'm I I, I realise that I actually quite like not moving from a seat all day and staring at a screen and being mm. vaguely antisocial. You know, it's it's quite a good way of getting a lot of work done. So so so. You know, I mean, I'm very fortunate in that I can do that. Uh, um, so I'm not going to grumble too much. You know, um, you know, I, I, you know, I've done twice the amount of work I'd normally do. So right, I'm quite pleased about that. Yeah, and I was reading, and you might have to correct me if I've misunderstood that when you initially yeah. joined the BBC, you were actually working in radio, right? I was, yeah, a long yeah, time so, ago. Yeah. So I guess what inspired you to pursue that initially? Then if that was the initial direction you took. Uh, it was entirely, like, I wrote to the BBC and I said, I can remember this exactly, it was in 1987, uh, and, mm. and I said, dear BBC, I will do anything if you pay me £5,000 a year. Yeah. Uh, and the BBC wrote back and said, dear John, if you pay, uh, if, you, if, if you come and be a clerk in radio, um, we'll pay you £5,500 a year. Mm. Um, and so it's kind of like really surreal really but but rather fun so i went in and i met a personnel officer and she said what do you want to do and i said i want to work in drama and she said okay well do radio drama uh and work your way up through that and so that's exactly what i did so they yeah i mean you know it's unlikely that would happen nowadays but it was a yeah but i i didn't go into radio i mean i loved radio so it wasn't a problem but it, it wasn't a specific choice they sort of said that if you want to do it here's a job Right. And I guess, obviously, you'd be more well known for television. And obviously, you've done like EastEnders, Waterloo Road, Life on Mars. Um, yeah. And I guess, uh, how did you get started in, in that industry? Well, I started, I basically, I started um, uh, doing radio drama. Uh, and yeah. Initially, as a sound engineer, which is how I learned my trade. Uh, but I was just watching radio drama all the time. And, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd worked in the theatre before that. And then I just wrote endless letters to people in television. Uh, and then finally, um, you know, my letter landed on the desk of um, the exec producer of EastEnders about an hour after a script editor had handed in their notice. Yeah. So they said, well, come and, um, come, and come and be a script editor. So, so I really started in EastEnders in about 1994, 93, yeah. something like that. Yeah, and again, kind of segueing into the next question with EastEnders, you've worked there, I think, across three separate stints at different times. So, Probably, and I guess, yeah. <laughs> and I guess because of like the revolving door nature of soap, was it ever kind of weird coming back and adjusting to the newer characters that weren't there when you were last there? Because obviously you've got the Ian Beals and Doc Cottons that were probably always there, and then you'd come back and there'd be whole new families or characters to contend with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, EastEnders is an ever-changing canvas, so nothing ever stays the same because you're mm. using up material, which means you're using up characters at a hideous rate. Um, so you know, there's the, 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 it's just every day there's a whole new sea of challenges. It never, it's not like doing a six-part series. So, sure. so in a way, it was always interesting to go back and see what people had done, and then see if you could build on that. You know where were the problems? Yeah, there because there are always problems, and then you yeah, can I come up with any solutions? So it's been fascinating. Yeah, and I guess most recently when you were at EastEnders, your like title was executive consultant. So how different was that um, role different to when you were there previously? Um, well, it was a kind of 
a slightly strange job because because you know the, the, the BBC asked me to come back, which is very nice oh. of them. But I, you know, but for various reasons, um, including I had a very young child, I couldn't really be back full time. Mm. Um, and so you know, so so I I said well call me a consultant rather than producer, and and then I I delegated a lot of the tasks around that while I looked for a new producer to take over. Um, and so, so in some ways, it, you know, it, it was quite nice because you have an overview, but in other ways, it was frustrating because really to do that, to do that job properly, you've got to do it, you know, all day, every day, mm. you know, it's got to be your life. And that's a lot, you know, when I first, I first did that job when I was 30 and it's a lot easier to do when you're 30. Right. And um, as I mentioned briefly in another question, you've worked on uh, the original BBC Life on Mars with John Sim and Philip Glenister. And I guess to what extent were you involved with the development of that show? Well, Life is a long history to that. Um, it was created by three friends of mine, uh, Ashley Farrow and Matthew Graham and Tony Jordan. Mm. Um, and I was a commissioning editor. Um, and they told me the story. I, I wasn't behind it. It was developed by Kudos. Um, sure. Initially. And they told me the story and I thought, oh, my God, that's a brilliant idea. And so everywhere I went as a commissioning editor, I, the first show I pitched was that, it, yeah, it got turned down by all the broadcasters before I got involved. Uh, and then everywhere I went, I took it with me and developed it. And I ended up as head of drama at Channel 4. And I spent mm. two years developing it there with them, uh, which was great because it, it evolved massively. You know, it, I think Matthew... Graham is writing the first episode, wrote 35 drafts. Right. Uh, and then it sort of found it's what we thought was great. And then Channel 4 said no. And then, you okay. know, it was hugely frustrating. Um, but at that point, I got a job offer from the BBC. And I said, well, look, if I can come over with this show, then mm. I'll come. And they said yes. And that's what happened. So we made it at the BBC. And I changed my job to do that. Right. And I guess, obviously, you know, television or the broader entertainment industry is not always the most reliable professions to go into. So did you ever consider many like broader alternative careers you could have pursued? Uh, not really. I mean, I, mm. I, I, I think from a very early age. So I grew up um, uh, living opposite me when I was a child was the producer of Z Cars, which was a huge show. At, yeah. Uh, the time and I was best friends with his children uh, and I thought he had the most glamorous life in the world because I'd see people from the cast go into his house and you know in those days that show got 20 million viewers and I was like eight or nine years old and I think at that point I fell in love with that idea of being a tv producer plus my dad made films in his spare time so i spent mm. a lot of time on film sets and so i never really thought about anything else really it's like what i always wanted to do yeah and you mentioned obviously your time at channel four and a big show i can think of that came out of that was shameless that you commissioned mm. and i guess kind of comparing uh shameless and life on mars they both got adapted for the us and you know yeah. once lasted for 11 years and one is not so like um i do do uh, did you kind of know at the start of um shameless it would have such longevity both here and there no I mean, in fact you know it, 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 when we finished filming series two i took um george and charlie who ran company pictures who were making shows mm. out and i said to them should we let's stop yeah i said let's right. stop because um, you know, it, it, this is fantastic. You know, if you stop now, you'll be always considered as like the next Faulty Towers, you know, mm. the, the office. And sure. they, they like, looked like at me. Short and like, sweet kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah. you know, like, because it, it was doing incredibly well. Um, and they looked at me as if I was mad. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I, I completely get it. You know, they, 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 they saw, you know, a, a big shiny future for it. And they were absolutely right. You know, so mm. it ran, you know, in the UK for, a, you know, about eight or nine years, I think, didn't it? And in the US is still running. So, you know, it goes to show. I mean, it evolved and became a slightly different beast, yeah. uh, and which is what you have to do if you're going to run. Uh, but they did it incredibly well. And um, no, it, it's amazing to, to, to see, you know, the, 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 there's still life in the old dog. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. It's uh, yeah. a real high point. 
And I guess in terms of all the series and other projects you've worked on, do you have a favourite? Uh, oh, that's, you know, who, who's your favourite child? Oh, um, uh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one. I mean, those mm. I love. Um, there was... Um, um, oh, God, what was there? There's a, there's a few things, but no, it, it's on, I, I, I'm, you know, you, as soon as I talk about one, I go, oh, that one or that one. You know, yeah. The thing, thing, you love Seamus, love Life on Mars. Um, uh, there, there was an extraordinary film I got involved with called Oma about the Oma bombing that Paul Greengrass did. Yeah. It was like, it was probably the, the, the show I learned the most on. Mm. Um, and also I worked with um, Jed Mercurio doing Bodies uh, and that was a fantastic education for me, because Jed and like Paul, they're both like they're geniuses, and so you just watch and learn from them yeah. all the time. But you know, there's if, 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 if there's a desert island things, there's a couple of I did it when I went back to EastEnders this last time. There's a yeah. couple yeah. of episodes I did, and, and I think that there's individual episodes I'm incredibly proud of, and think you know, there's one we did with um, Shaquille's funeral, um, mm. where we use real people. Yeah. Uh, and, and that I remember felt reading like, about that at the time. Yeah, and that felt yeah. like gee, trying to do something new and different with the form, you know. And then we did an episode shot entirely in real time in the Vic, um, all about Ruby Allen and 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 and, and her sexual assault. Uh, and again, that felt you know it's about doing new stuff all the time. And so mm. you know, I'm always like, well, what's exciting? What barriers have we broken? You know? And yeah. when I said that, I say that. But I'm, one of the things I find absolutely fascinating is one of the shows I, I, I you know, I, I am incredibly proud of is Waterloo Road. Yeah. Um, which, um, which I'm thrilled to see. I think is still the number one show on iPlayer at the moment. Uh, and, you know, that taps into, you know, I'm all for being brave and new, but there's, the other thing about Waterloo Road was it's serving an audience that doesn't often get served on, on, on terrestrial TV. Uh, mm which was a very young, uh, not broadsheet reading audience, you know, like just big, bold entertainment, but packed with yeah. issues as well. And so, so that was a huge thing for me, Waterloo Road. I was, yeah, I loved that. It's crazy. but like... Yeah. And I guess kind of aside from your career on television, you also uh, wrote Into the Woods, which is obviously now, I guess, um, I guess considered like one of the leading screenwriting books. And what was your initial like genesis for putting those ideas on paper? So thank you. I, I was I was running Channel Four Drama, and then I came back to the BBC, and I got a much bigger job. And part of it was running um, continuing drama, um, mm. as well as commissioning in, independence. And I looked at continuing drama, and and there was a problem because the shows. The amount of hours being made had increased massively, you know. So the you know, EastEnders went from three times a week to four times a week. You know, Cash yeah. and Holby went from sixteen episodes to being all year round, and so there was a massive deficit in writers. And so I just had this idea that well, that we're going to have to train people. Yeah. And so really, I just started doing that, and I started off by you know reading all the normal. Sid Field, Robert McKee stuff, but slowly yeah. I, I was in this really lucky environment where you know we were making stuff all the time, so I could I could test um, my ideas all the time, you know, like and yeah. you know, and, and see them actually played out, and so very slowly it evolved um, from those beginnings into something. Oh, this is how I so I worked out my own theory of structure, which seemed to work, and then you know uh, one of my students. Um, had worked in publishing sure. and he said to me one day he said well what you should write this down uh, and that student's Rob Williams who's now gone on to do The Victim and Man in the High Castle and right. yeah, amazing amazing yeah. writer but he was the guy he said write it down uh, and um, and so I did and amazingly there was a the, you know there seemed to be a market for it so it's lovely but it's kind of real labor of love because you know I, fi I find more and more as I get older that's the stuff I love. I find the study of structure absolutely fascinating. Mm. And I suppose you touched on this with your neighbour you mentioned earlier, but would you, who would you say were your influences as a writer or a producer? 
<laughs> well, yeah, I mean, he was like, you know, my 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 best friend's dad. So, so it was right. a weird mental thing. Um, I mean, influences. I mean, you know, early on in the industry, it was with people like Joe Mercurio uh, and, and Paul Greengrass. Also, Tony Jordan was a massive yeah. influence on me. Yeah, he taught me a huge amount. Paul Abbott, uh, you know, I, I mean, I was very, very lucky uh to work with all these people at quite a young age but also yeah. i'd watched a lot of telly you know and i'd watched um i'd watched a couple of things i'd watched um i mean again these are very old shows so they may not mean very much but i watched um the singing detective by dennis potter which right I thought was i still think is the greatest work of television drama ever uh yeah. An edge of darkness which i suspect is probably dated slightly now but troy kennedy martin thriller and i'd watched those and they were profoundly influential again, like, oh, wow, telly can do that. Mm. Okay. So, I, yeah, so, you know, I was a telly geek, basically. Yeah, and I, I guess this is uh, it's actually the last question I've got here. And obviously, you know, we're all um, living during this pandemic and it's a tough time. So mm. what kind of advice would you offer to people who might be struggling through it? Oh, well, I, I don't feel very qualified to offer any yeah, advice outside of sure. working in television. Sure, <laughs> but, sure. Um, uh, I mean, I think, you know, the, the general advice is, you know, keep busy, have a purpose. You know, mm. one, one of the things that screenwriting taught me was, was it, you know, the, the, the rules of screenwriting kind of are really applicable to the um, rules of real life, which is if a character has a desire, they have a reason to live and a purpose. And so it's, you know, yeah. that was, seemed to be really smart advice if you're working in telly i mean you know you know you have to watch everything everything you need to watch i think uh at least one episode of everything and you need to um you just need to write yeah you know but if you're doing that i mean i appreciate you know that's easy for me to say because i get paid to to do that and that's yeah. that sort of thing i think it's very tough for a lot of people but if you can find the time to do that you know, uh, and if you want to work in television, then it's just like, you know, it's just, you know, you've got to write all the time if you want to be mm. a writer. You know, it's like learning a musical instrument. Don't wait for them to come to you. <laughs>